Hey middle schoolers, Mr. Riedel here. So I'm a teacher at one of the schools here in Reynolds School District and you just got an iPad to use for school. So I am going to give you a brief tour of the basics for what you can expect uh, when you are learning how to use your new iPad for school. Okay, so let's take a look at some things that you need to know. So the first thing, when you turn it on, you will see all these apps. The settings app is a place where you can go to update any software that you need to. If you tap on update software, you will see that it says download and install if it needs an update. So you need to make sure that you have Wi-Fi on, which I'll explain more later, in order to download and install. So tap that, enter your passcode, and then it will say that it's uh, estimating time remaining, the update is requested, and it will give you approximately how much time is remaining for updating. So you want to make sure that your iPad is updated, and then it says preparing update, and when I did this, it said preparing update for a long time. So what I did is I plugged it in and charged it in order to make sure that it is charged while it's updating. And then if you tap on customize automatic updates, says your iPad must be charging and connected to Wi-Fi to complete the update. So I know that there's different kinds of updates, but what I decided to do is just to charge it and connect it to Wi-Fi, and after a few minutes, it was done. So I went back in, and I looked at it, and I saw that it said your software is up to date. So that's what I needed. Okay, so next up I want to talk about Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And when you go to the home screen, you can swipe down from the upper right hand corner. That is the control center. And one of the buttons on there is Wi-Fi. If you tap on that, then it will disconnect. And if you tap on it again, then it will reconnect Wi-Fi. And if you tap and hold on it, then it will give you uh, options for what you can do. And you can select which Wi-Fi you want to connect to. Bluetooth is the same, on, off, blue means on, and uh, you can connect any device to Bluetooth, and oftentimes your teacher, your teachers will need you to have both of those on when you are at school. Verizon has this plan where they give you data if you're at home so you don't need Wi-Fi, but in order to update the software and have automatic updates, you're going to need to connect to Wi-Fi. And if you don't have Wi-Fi at home, you can get to the school and you can get free Wi-Fi there. So the next thing that I want to talk to you about is how to do a screenshot. And uh, on your iPad you'll have, at the bottom there's the home button, and at the top on the back is the power button. So what you do is you hold the home button and then tap the power button once in order to take a screenshot just like that. It appears as a little icon that you can tap on and share or find in your Photos app. Some of you may have been noticing that I have been recording my screen on my iPad. And that is a function called screen recording, and that is uh, an option that you can get to in the settings, control center, and then customize controls. And then you can see the screen recording is one of those options there. And it's currently on, but what I can do is I can turn it off and remove it. And you will see now when I swipe down from the control center again that now it's not there anymore. Um, so if I want to put it back on, I type, tap the plus, and there it's back at the top. And then I swipe down from the control center again, and there it is again. So you can change the icons to appear or not appear on the control center based on what you see. And you can tap and hold that in order for you to have more options like recording your voice or not. And then you tap on it once in order to stop recording. Uh, very useful if you have something that you want to show your teacher or if you have an issue with something wrong on your iPad and you want to share your screen so that others can see and help you with any problems that you might be having. And the next thing that I want to talk about is your camera and there's a little camera icon in the control center but you can also find it as an app on your home screen. And so when you tap on that you can see that you can like take selfies and I'll show you how to find those photos later. And then you can tap this button here in order to flip and use the other camera on the back side. And that's helpful if you want to take pictures, but also if you want to scan QR codes like this one I've had in my classroom. If you scan a QR code, you can tap on that link at the top that pops up, and then that will automatically go to whatever the QR code uh, tells you to, either a website or something else. Um, so that's an example for the camera, but if you want to access the photos that you take, you tap on the Photos app, and then you can see 
and you can click on any of those photos or videos and share them with your friends or teachers or whoever needs them. The next thing I want to talk to you about is rotating your screen. When you swipe down and go to the control center, you'll see this lock button and that will either lock your screen so that when you try to rotate your iPad, then it does not move. But if you uncheck it, then you're able to turn it so that it is either landscape mode or portrait mode, depending on how you turn it. It's helpful depending on certain apps that you use or certain functions. And when you turn it a certain way, you can lock it and then it locks that way so that when you try to turn it, it doesn't go. So that's something that's super helpful. I usually like to keep it unlocked so I can have it in both portrait or landscape, depending on how I hold it. The next thing that I want to show you is a self-service app. This app is where you can find a whole bunch of other apps. Go ahead and tap continue. And this is where you'll find a whole bunch of other apps that you can download uh, for your iPad. Some already come installed that are already on your home screen, but there's a whole bunch to choose from. Um, great academic apps that will uh, be really helpful to you. So I'm just going to give you an example one to download if we scroll down to here's one calm I'm gonna install calm here for you so you can see what happens it is installed but it doesn't say anything you have to go to your home screen to see that it is currently loading and once it is finished loading then it will be installed onto your home screen so now you can use it and the next thing that I want to talk about is uh, organizing your apps because I want to show you how to organize you if you tap and hold an app you will have the ability to um, move it around and put it where you want it and once those apps start jiggling a little bit that shows you when you are, have the ability to move it around on your uh, home screen to the spot that you want it to go in uh, so you can sort and organize your apps just the way that you want them you can even put them in folders and um, what I like to do is I like to find the best spot that will help me uh, be successful so that I know where to find these apps. Important apps you can put down below in the, on the bottom bar, which you can always see. Um, and something else that's really useful is finding other apps that you might need, like Teams. I made another video about Teams that uh, is useful because you, you're going to use that a lot in our school district and Schoology is something else that we use for our classes. Uh, other important apps are like the settings um, or maybe the clock if you want to make sure that you can use um, the alarm on the clock for whatever reason you might need to wake up in the morning. And something else that's useful is organizing these apps into folders. Um, and you can't put them in folders on the bottom bar so you're gonna have to drag them out back onto the home screen and then put them in folders there on the home screen and you can rename the folder to whatever you want like Schoology and, tech and Teams are both similar so uh, you're going to find your schoolwork there so you're going to be able to label that schoolwork. Um, so this is the folder with Schoology and Teams and you can even tap and hold and drag that folder to a different location. Maybe you want it on the bottom bar to have that folder accessible no matter what screen you're on. So that's something that is super helpful. And then you just tap the home screen again to stop those icons from jiggling and then it's back to normal. Now you can see the folder. And so now I'm gonna put the apps back where I found them because this isn't my iPad, I'm just borrowing it. <laughs> okay, the next thing that I wanna to talk to you about is speech to text. So I'm going to swipe over to Teams and I'm going to start typing a message. For example, hi Mr. Riedel, I have a question for you. And as you can see, I misspelled my name. I accidentally put two D's in there. So I want to go back in there and fix that. But if I try to tap on it, it selects the whole word. And if I like try to tap on other words, it doesn't go right to the middle of the word. So a tip for that is if you tap and hold, then you'll be able to move the cursor right to the middle of the word and then right, right when I get where I want it then I can delete that D and then it's spelled correctly 
even though the iPad still thinks it's wrong. That is how you spell my name. <laughs> so anyway, the main thing I wanted to show you was speech to text. So there's this little button at the bottom of the keyboard that looks like a microphone. If you tap on that, um, enable dictation, yes. And so using this will allow you to talk and then it will type for you. So for example, I might want to use it this way. Can you help me with my assignment on chapter three? Question mark. I would really appreciate it. Period. Thank you so much! Exclamation mark. And then you can tap on the little keyboard icon on the bottom to go back to the keyboard. The next thing that I want to show you it has to do with speak selection. So I tap and hold and then I drag the little dots to the whole thing and then I copy that and I am going to go to a different app. I tap the home screen and then tap on Word. So this is the app that I'm going to use to show you turn on notifications and then you're all set and I'm just going to tap a blank document here so that I can show you some examples. Uh, now I'm going to tap and hold and then tap paste in order to paste what I copied but the formatting looks weird so I'm going to push that little button and I'm going to tap keep text only so that it just shows the text um, and then I'm going to select all and then I'm going to change the font size so it's a little bit bigger so you can, guys can see it a little easier. And then the different menu options are the home tab or the insert tab or draw. And there's all these different layout options and review and then view. What we're going to look at is view and you guys can investigate these all later. Tap on immersive reader. One way that it can read to you if you tap on read aloud and then you tap on the first word and then push play. Hi Mr. Riedel, I have a question for you. Can you help me with my assignment on chapter three? I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Then it reads to you. So that's super helpful. But there's another way to do it that's a little bit easier. So if you get out of there and you go to the settings, then in the settings under the accessibility tab, uh, if you tap on spoken content, tap on speak selection, you will be able to do it a little bit easier. This is an alternative way. So I'm going to go back to Word and this way you can just tap and hold and select all and then there's a, there's a new little option that says speak. Hi Mr. Riedel, I have a question for you. Can you help me with my assignment on chapter 3? I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And if that sounded a little robotic for you, you can double tap the home button and then go back to settings and then you can go into voices and pick any type of voice that you want. There's lots of different choices. And the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is split screen. So what I want to do is I want to open up Teams and let's say that I want to look at something on one half of the screen and then type something on the other half in order to multitask. That's something you can do by swiping up very slowly from the bottom. You'll see the, the navigation bar on the bottom. And then you can tap and hold in order for you to open up a second app at the same time. So if you tap and hold it and then move it up a little bit, you'll be able to move it around uh, and this will be a second window for something else that you could be working on at the same time. But that looks a little funny, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it over to the side and then drag it to the over other side. So there's some choices for which side or the location that you want it in. So I'm going to put it on the side for now so that it is split screen 50-50 half and half. And sometimes you may have to reopen it. And so I'm going to pinch and zoom it so that it's a little bit smaller so that I can read it easier. And so now I have two windows open at the same time, split screen, and I can go to the other one and I can like select it all and then copy it and then go back to the other one and then uh, hit and hit return a couple times and then tap and hold and then paste it, keep text only so that I see. And then this might be really helpful for online lessons because then you can like see your teacher doing a lesson on one half of the screen and then maybe you could be taking notes on the other half of the screen. And the way that you get back to normal is you tap on the top with that little line and then you drag it down and into a different location or up to the top and then it goes back to normal. 
and you can double tap the home button and then go back to a different screen. All right, so those are the basics. I hope you learned something and I hope you guys have a great start to the school year. If you guys have any questions at all, please reach out to me or your teacher and ask for help. There's lots to learn uh, for this new school year and uh, I hope that we are all patient with each other and that we are um, continually making progress. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day.